This is my summary of Chapter 4 of Abnormal Psychology 7th Edition by Barlow and Durand. Chapter 4 Research Methods First of all, underpinning all research are experiments, which is the manipulation of variables in order to see their effects. There's a hypothesis or an educated guess of expected findings, and there's a research design or what you are measuring and its effects. The dependent variable or DV is what is being measured and IV or independent variable is what is being manipulated. There's a control group whereby it is not exposed to the manipulation. Analog models are controls that have the situation similar to the condition being studied. Internal validity is the confidence in whether the independent variable is causing the dependent variable to change. And then there's external validity or how well results relate to things outside the study of real world impacts. Testability is the ability to support a hypothesis and it has to be falsifiable because through that then you're able to test if a certain let's say construct is an actual thing in reality. A confound is a third variable that is hard to interpret its effects or relations. Randomization is defined as assigning people to different research groups in which anyone has an equal chance of appearing in any group and this is done to cancel out these potential confounds. Generalizability are the results that apply to populations studied from the sample. So we have a sample and in order to infer discoveries made about that sample to the population, you have to make a generalization. Statistical significance is a mathematical calculation about a certain difference between groups. It could be assigned as, let's say, a p-value, probability value of 0.05, in which you have a 5% chance of getting this discovery if the null hypothesis is true, or let's say a 1% chance of getting that discovery if the p-value, probability value, is 0.01. Clinical significance is whether the difference was meaningful for those affected. Effect size is how large the differences are. This is usually measured uh, through Cohen's D. Patient uniformity myth is a tendency to see patients of a group as homogenous, whereby individual differences are ignored. A case study is investigating one or more individuals intensely for physical or behavioral problems. So for example, psychoanalysts like Freud and Carl Jung they relied heavily on case studies, which is still important. You're able to get quite a lot of information about it, but it is very uh, individualized, let's say, to the specific person that you're studying. It's much harder to generalize that information as opposed to using experimental research. Epidemiology is defined as the study of incidence, distribution, and consequences of certain problems in a population. A placebo is the expectation of change that brings about the change, despite using an impotent drug. So for example, I might give someone a sugar pill and then because they believe that this sugar pill will help them, they don't know it's a sugar pill by the way, but because they believe this medication will help them, in a way it actually helps them and that is a placebo. In order to control for, let's say, researchers having their own biases impact in the research, in the study, a double blind control is used whereby patients and researchers are both blind to what is happening. Or treatments that are being given. Now the problem with these double-blind controls is that the, the actual person who's organizing this entire experiment has to micromanage what the individual researchers are seeing and what the patients are expected to see. Comparative treatment are when researchers give two or more treatments to assess the effectiveness of treatments. So in a way you could see if the treatments combined together have an effect or assess them separately or whether there's an interaction happening. Single case experimental design. According to Skinner, it's a systematic study of individuals under experimental conditions as opposed to studying few behaviours of large groups or averaging out. Repeated measurements is defined as behaviour that is measured several times instead of once afterwards. Withdrawal designs. A researcher determines whether the independent variable is responsible for changes in behaviour by taking the actual treatments, IVs, away. A baseline is a person's condition evaluated before the treatment. It's hard to conduct withdrawal designs when there are multiple baselines. Endophenotypes are genes that contribute to symptoms or difficulties in disorders, the physiological conditions that are connected to the mental disorder. Probund is a trait singled out in an individual within a family study. There's genetic lineage analysis, which is where researchers look for genetic markers or location, and then they assess how the trait is passed down. They compare large groups of people. Association studies. These use genetic markers, but compares people who have and don't have the disease. If there's more of a certain genetic marker present, then that could indicate a stronger correlation with 
the issue at hand. Retrospective information is looking back, like uh, looking at archival research, previous research from the literature, but a general rule of thumb is looking back, the literature may be less accurate, as let's say the test measures might not be as well developed, etc. etc. Cross-generational effect is where findings are generalized to groups whose expectancies are different from those of the study participants. They factor in different generations as well as cross-section or, or the cohort is looked at. Finally, the sequential design, which are repeated studies of different cohorts over a certain period of time. So you're looking at how these different cohorts play out and, and through correlational research you can see where the important variables at play, let's say. So yeah, we looked at research methods in abnormal psychology, spanning from experiments or in the use of models, uh, analogous models, looked at concepts like validity, testability, randomization, generalizability, statistical significance, clinical significance, patient uniformity myth, placebo epidemiology, the double-blind control, comparative treatment, single-case experimental designs, repeated measures, withdrawal designs, baseline endophenotypes, proben, genetic lineage analysis, association studies, retrospective information, cross-generational effects, sequential designs. So yeah, join me next time where I'll talk about chapter 5, anxiety, trauma, stressor-related, and OCD disorders. Yeah, thanks for watching.